Hey guys, Lichy Bowie here, and these are the things that I learned with Wings Faith Beyond during TA6. His starting items are pretty much standard for offlane void. The double region is very good considering there is a bounty hunter and spirit breaker in the game, so even with his time walk, he'll definitely be taking tons of damage. Also, you can notice he is going to get a poor man shield, which is just a very good item on any agility melee hero considering after the 6.88 patch, the build changed to maxing bash. The extra agility is also a plus to land more bashes with the hero. His block is pretty standard, just letting the ranged creep go in front. But did you notice what Spirit Breaker did? By standing there, the melee creep keeps chasing him, but the ranged is forced to attack, and because of that, he is not in front of the creep wave now. He's not even going to enter the lane, he just goes straight to the jungle with an Iron Talon. I do like this decision. This is a very strong kill lane against the Darkseer. He should have a sentry, he's dropped one down already. There's another stifling dagger to come through. Plenty of damage on Blink and he has his bottle already. Went no regen, got two cool... Which helps the Dire team a lot. When Ursa goes aggressive on him, notice his pattern of movements. He is retreating, but at the same time trading hits with the Ursa, because he knows the Ursa will keep attacking him. So he might as well deal some damage and then try to avoid one very big hit in the end with the time walk. But before he is able to do that, the Elder Titan dissuades the Ursa from dealing more damage. The Void again doesn't mind trading hits with the Ursa, because he can avoid the last one or two big hits coming from him, and they are still very low level, so the Ursa doesn't punch as hard. But the thing is that you have to be really careful with these plays in the beginning, since if the Elder Titan wasn't there, he would definitely get charged as soon as he time walked. Also, notice that going poor man shield allows him to tank big creep waves and less hit them outside of tower range, which gives him a lot of extra gold. The double region also cannot be underestimated since it helps him doing that. Looking to scope out this dark here, might be able to find a first one of 4F who is very low again. When the creep equilibrium is crazy, like we can see here, tons of creeps in the Ursa Tower, side pulling as an offlaner is very important, because you can deny experience from the Ursa with almost no reaction, since he won't leave his tower, and since the supports were also not in the lane. Oh, these are the kinds of mistakes that can come back to haunt you against MVP. In the end, Ursa ends up getting there faster than he expected, but by having control of where the dire creep wave is, since now the Ursa has to stay near the neutrals, he doesn't need to fear any aggression from the Ursa. Even with level 2 time walk, he can die to a spirit breaker charge, so notice that he only goes for trades with the Ursa after seeing him in the other half of the map. Even when he tries to trade some hits with the Ursa, without having vision of the spirit breaker, he makes sure to time walk toward his tower and not some random location. Also, he always waits for the Ursa passive duration to end when he made the trade, or else the Ursa will do so much damage that maybe he won't be able to time walk it fast enough. This time though, the spirit breaker did charge him, but since he time walked towards his tower, he ends up being able to survive. Get that top lane. Another charge coming in, face beyond. He got the time walk, but he's going level 2. He's going to try to get that damage done. Get the time walk coming in and down. There's no way of getting out if they get the bash here. He's actually huge, but the team is going to be coming in already from wings. Although it is cancelled, Ice Ice won't end up coming to that top lane. Is... This clip is very interesting. He goes for another trade on the Ursa and ends up bashing him, missing only a sliver of experience to get level 6. He time walks back to show that he is afraid of the Ursa while in reality he's trying to bait the Ursa when he gets his Chronosphere. But the Dire is also baiting the Faceless Void, since the Spirit Breaker was hidden there. And they know that Void doesn't have Time Walk anymore. If the Void just used his Chrono right where he was standing, there was a very big chance that he would be able to kill the Ursa, but more importantly, he would cancel the charge. But you have to remember that the Chrono animation is very telling and that the Ursa might have time to use his ult since he was also level 6. Faith Beyond played this very boldly. A lot of Voids would just use the Chrono to get back. But since he knew the Juggernaut was coming, not only he keeps hitting inside the Chrono, but he lingers around the fight and even though the Omni Slash doesn't take the Ursa down, if Faith Beyond wasn't there to hit the Spirit Breaker TP in, they wouldn't be able to get that kill and they would have just waited two ults for nothing. This clip is very funny. Faith is still lingering around because he was waiting for the Iron Shell on the PHO end to try to help the Juggernaut. 
But in the end, someone else was lingering around you, the bounty hunter. And he just pays for it. Down, and it looks like he will. Come out, come out, baby. Yeah, and he's he's three. Three. Double kill. Oh, wow. Double kill and uh, what a start for that. One of the weaknesses of the Bash build on Offlane Void is that you won't be able to use Time Walk freely. In this clip, he had used Time Walk to get out of the base, and when he TPs to mid, he could have died if the charge was on him and not the creep. Also, it disencourages him to go on MVP after the Batrider shows up. I think the biggest problem of this game is that MVP's heroes are pretty good against Void overall. All the heroes there are very tanky or can get invisible or have evasion. And because of that, since Disruptor didn't have a good game, they don't have much follow-up into the Chronosphere yet. Here we have a very good example of that. Since he has offlane farm, he also struggles to get targets down by his own, even a bounty hunter. But if MVP overextend, then Wings can slowly grind their way back to this game. And that's what happens here. Heavy, they don't have the detection it looks like, so they might go back in on Shadow as they get another crit from that stifling dagger. Bebby continues to hound Shadow at this he point. He does have Omni though. He's gonna use it. Bebby kills the healing ward was not expected to turn around from Shadow. Still getting crit. Running more and a blade fury QO though. He's in trouble. He's the one that got the clip. Can they bring him down? It looks like he's gonna get a double kill with the Lyle at the bottom rune. One of the benefits of going treads and getting the 4th point in time walk before the bash is that he can use it to move around the map way faster and you can see he makes full use of that. In this clip he is farming the jungle and spots the bounty hunter tracking him. Pay close attention to his movements. People have the tendency to place people in the middle of the chrono. But with Juggernaut and Batrider on your team, you definitely want them to be able to hit or at least to have the range to use their skills inside the chrono. So he anticipates the movement from the BH and places the Chrono in a decent position. They don't end up needing the Juggernaut or the Batrider for the kill, but that's a very good tip for games you're playing Void with a lot of melee heroes in your team. With no levels of time dilation and Chronosphere of cooldown, Faith does the best he can to help his team, which is farm. Again, he keeps threat switching and using time walk as much as possible when he's moving. I feel like I should warn you. Avoid doing this when the enemy might have vision of you, like in the lane, because if they are around, that's the perfect sign for them to start you. One important point is that he is farming, but in the lane, and that's something a lot of players forget. Farming the lane not only gives you more golden experience, but it pushes the lane giving you vision of the enemy side of the map while damaging his towers. There isn't a safer and better time to farm the lane instead of the jungle when you can see the enemy team fighting and you just can't or don't want to go there. Even if the enemy team wins the fight, there's a big chance it will be hard for them to get an objective because there's a threat of your push hurting their towers. He sees everyone pushing mid and he goes back to push the bottom tower. And this time it's a little bit dangerous since they are way closer now than in the other engagement but he understand that and just bait the charge before TPing back. Hey guys, this is it for today. If you want to see this entire replay breakdown, please check my PVGNA affiliate link in the description. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to it. I'm making videos like this every day and I'm sure something here will spark your interest. And if you really like my channel, please check my Patreon rewards and see if any of them are of your liking. Bye. But against drafts, where you're not exactly sure who you're facing, it's always optimal to get only the region and wait until you're sure about the lanes you're going to face. Ursa is generally a very strong hero against 1 vs 1 matchups. You usually want to slowly add up stacks of your passive in the enemy using your higher move speed until he either has to retreat